Hi, everybody. I'm Chad McFarland. I'm an engineer in our product development group. I'm here to kind of talk about vapor chambers and how they're different uh, uh, from heat pipes, how they're better, how they're worse, some of the different design considerations that need to be made. Uh, so let's just start off with how a heat pipe operates. Um, you can see a lot of videos on our website about how these work. Um, but essentially what you have is you have some sort of a copper tube with a um, copper wick in here, sometimes screen, sometimes powder. Um, and what happens is this is charged with some working fluid, typically water. Um, and so the way heat pipes works, they're really good at transporting heat in one dimension, so across kind of a linear path. Uh, so you might have some sort of heat source here, call it the evaporator, um, and then the heat projection site might be up here. Uh, so what would happen is you would have the water um, kind of boil into the vapor space here, and then it would condense back into the wick here, and then the wick would use the capillary force to pump it back to the evaporator. And so you get this kind of uh, little loop path through the wick in the vapor space uh, to transport the heat. And a vapor chamber is very similar, so it kind of does that in two dimensions instead of one dimension. It's really good at heat spreading across the surface. Um, so essentially, it's kind of the same idea where you have a copper wall and then you have um, some sort of wick. Typically, the wick is going to be um, some sort of powder wick since the screen doesn't really work as well for this geometry here. Um, and the same exact idea, you have some sort of evaporator, some sort of um, you know, condenser. The heat kind of comes in, wick boil, uh, water boils in the wick into the vapor space, condenses and comes back. Um, so that's a general path there. Um, so the vapor chambers are really good because they can be custom fit to a lot of different shapes. They don't have to be perfect um, certain size rectangles. They can have different heights, different widths, different planks, um, and are really good at spreading out heat and getting a pretty close to isothermal um, kind of volume there. Um, there are a couple of challenges that come with a vapor chamber compared to heat pipe. Uh, the biggest one is cost, um, just since heat pipes um, are a lot easier to manufacture quickly due to their um, kind of lack of complexity. Uh, vapor chambers, a lot more design considerations have to be made into them. Um, another thing is for, for structural support. Vapor chambers, it's also pretty typical that we might need to add in um, some sort of supports to the structure. Um, mainly because with the vapor chamber, you have a very, um, typically some sort of square geometry. Um, and with heat pipes, you have radial geometry. Radial geometry is much better at handling um, the external or internal pressures um, to make sure, um, you know, with the water vapor increase in temperature, you have a pressure buildup on the inside. Um, and so it's much less of a concern with heat pipes compared to vapor chambers. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the main idea there. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in.